Hi, I'm Gail Minogue and I want to welcome you back again to some more work on numerology and today's talk is going to be about how you planned your life. Most people do not realize that they actually have a plan for their life and that they create it prior to being born. So when you're going to um, come back to the earth plane again, shall we say, you create a blueprint which is hidden in your name and date of birth. And this name you will take and impress upon your parents' subconscious to give to you at birth. So you basically name yourself even if you don't like your name, it's yours. And it actually hides a code. And what you did by planning this name before birth is you added all of the information you're going to need to work with while you're here. So prior to birth, we have a setup. We're going to have a body. You're going to get one body. You're not going to get two bodies. You're going to get one body. And this body has to stay with you the entire time you're here. So you need to learn to take very good care of it. It's like giving a car, a beautiful car when you're born. It's going to have to last you your whole life. Or giving a beautiful racehorse. You're going to have to care for this racehorse your entire life. And you can't run it ragged and you can't wear it out. Unfortunately, most people do not realize this. And by the time they're 50, they've rather run their races, run their triathlons, run their marathons, eaten poorly, and they're starting to begin to deteriorate as early as 50. So we want to take good care of that body you were given at birth. A body should last approximately 120 years at least. So I'm going to talk to you about the name you were born with and how you set that up. And what it hides is your destiny. The name hides your talent. It hides your karma. It hides your personality. All of this is in this name that you have at birth. The date of birth you chose and you came in with a magnification that was done by the constellations. So at this time you took your first breath, you're magnetized at a planetary setup. So you have an energy package, a body, and away you go. So I like to break up the time periods you're here, and I call them the, the time on Earth. And in this period, we have first the early years. These are ages 1 through 30. These are the early years. It takes 30 years to get out of childhood. So you have to learn just to get here the first seven years. The next seven years, you have to learn how to make up your own mind and develop the mind. The next seven years, you have to learn how to work with the emotions. And the next seven years is how to integrate the body with the mind and the emotions. That's a total of 29 years. And then the last year, you begin to integrate and move out of childhood. So you begin your adult life approximately 30, 31. So these are the early years, the first part of your life. You are not out of childhood until you get out of 30s, no matter what you may tell you. And then the next group of years, the next 30 years, are called your middle years. And these are ages 30 through 60. So middle midlife begins at 60. You should always remember that. No matter what people tell you of 40 being middle age, it is not. You're only 10 years past childhood. The 40s, you will work very hard, but it's just basically laying a platform or foundation for the remainder of your life. So this is a plan that is in place. Never forget, you're part of this. At certain times during this period, you will activate events. You will activate challenges. You will activate good, the bad, the ugly, whatever you want to call it, during these periods while you're here. Your date of birth that you chose will activate the times. So there's times when you want to start a business. There's times when you want to take time out and restore yourself. There's times when you want to finish a business. All kinds of timing, but you have your timing. It's all from your date of birth, the month, the day, and the year. So the middle years are very productive years. These are years when you work hard, um, you start planning for, say, a future. Uh, but fortunately, what we do is we plan for retirement. And this is a man-made concept that's very damaging. The soul does not come here to retire. It comes here to be productive. It comes here to grow, to be challenged, and go from what we'll say 
career to another productive run. Uh, they can come in every 10 years, 30 years, whatever you like. But you always want to stay relevant. Always stay relevant. So for you, remember there's no such thing as retirement and that eventually will be going away. So these middle years, age 30 to 60, you're working, you're productive, you begin to free yourself in your 50s. Every seventh birthday, remember, is what we call a soul cycle year. They last one year from, say, 7 to 8, you know, 14 to 15, 49 to 50. When you do 49 to 50, that's what we call the most important soul cycle year. That is age 49 to age 50. That's the seventh soul cycle, or 7 times 7. This is when you are integrated enough to begin to free yourself from your shoulds, what you should do, what you shouldn't have done, or what your parents told you. And so a lot of people go through a big change in life at 49 to 50. They make very big uh, changes in their own personal life or their careers. So at 50s, now is really the changing years where you will start to look at, do I really want to continue doing this? Do I really want to plan on retirement? What should I do? And those are in the 50s. So by the time you're 60, you're like, what do I do now? I've, you know, for the last 30 years of my life, I've been a banker or say, what do I do now? Well, you better have a plan for the next 30 years because the next log of the journey from 60 to 90 are called your experience years. These can be extremely productive. And people laugh when I say you can be extremely productive in your 80s. But remember when I told you you were given one car, one body, one racehorse at birth. You did not take care of it. So by the time you're in your 70s, you're worn out, fried, having, having problems with diabetes, blood pressure problems, arthritis, etc. You didn't eat right. You didn't pay attention. You didn't honor the body and the body will not be dismissed. For those who do not honor the body, the body will throw you off just like a good racehorse will throw off the rider. So it's very, very important that all through this time you stay here, you learn nutrition, you learn how to treat the racehorse, you take very good care of it. Because when you reach the experienced years from 60 to 90, this is when it will be very important that you had maintained yourself well. You should never think of retirement. So you want to have a plan from 60 to 90. I don't know anybody who has a plan from 60 to 90. People come to me and they're 60 and they say, what do I do now? I'm going to retire in two years, five years. I retired already. I don't know what to do. I really think I'm moving to Florida. I mean, they make comments that are outrageous because they should have another career. That doesn't mean they do the same work they did. You know, in the middle years, they could do totally different work. But they need to be relevant, productive, and healthy. And if the first thing you must learn to do is to go get healthy before you do anything else. Learn how nutrition can heal you. Learn and stop paying attention to processed foods. Because that's not what the body came in with. So it, that's very important to see you through. So you want to think of working in your 60s, your 70s, and your 80s. And fortunately, more and more people are doing that because that's what we should be doing. The other thing is, if you do not have a plan, by the time you are 63, you will begin to get prepared to leave. This is what we do. We think we're retiring. We have aches and pains. We are, getting, we are telling our body we are going to leave. It may take 10 years. It may take 20 years. But you're certainly not planning for the future or future careers. So this is extremely important that you have ideas of careers or work or whatever you want to call it from 60 to 63, that by 63 or nine cycles of seven, the completion, that you have a plan for the next 30 years. I cannot emphasize this enough. And most people are so not doing it. So make sure you're not one of them. But you must first go back to take care of the racehorse, right? You're going to take care of your body. And then the next group of years are what we call the wisdom years. These are the wisdom years where you have a lot of information to give back. This is age 90 to 120. How many people do you know that even make it past 90? This is because they did not maintain, they did not pace themselves, and they had nothing looking forward to that made them relevant. 
So you're not going to be one of these. You're going to plan your life that you're going to come up to 90 and you're going to have the wisdom years of your life so that we go out to 120. Actually, today, walking around on this planet, there are people who will live to be 150 years old. So just keep that in mind. You're given one body when you get here, okay? You must maintain it. You have a blueprint. Everyone who watches this should really, if you do it with me or do it with someone else, I don't care. You need to learn what blueprint did you come in with. And you need to learn that early. Parents need to learn it so they can help them guide their children. But you have a personality, you have talent, you have karma, you have a destiny that you're always going towards, and you have a particular learning lesson that you said you would work with. This is very, very important. We invest more time, energy, and money in dumb stuff than we do in prolonging our lives, taking care of ourselves, and coming here to say, do what we said we would do. We do what we do is become uh, entertained rather than grow, and we're here to grow, and we're here to learn through emotional energy and free will choice. So you're always a choice, and you're always going to have emotional energy attached to everything here. So you have to learn how to manage yourself. So now that you know how to do that, or you go back and listen to this again, this can help you through the second half of your life. You don't have to end up with all these what we call degenerative diseases. And society has bought into it, so we have it. Remember that conscious mind that permeates everything. It's like we're little harbors tied to a big ocean of leaving this planet at a certain time and retiring. And these are, these are all man-made. Now, the general, there's some general exit ages I wanted to share with you. These are pretty standard exit ages, and they have to do, again, with how the constellations hit your chart. And this is pretty standard for everybody. One of the most common ages is 83, 84. A lot of people leave. And another is 88 through 90, when a lot of other people leave. Generally, if you have um, taken very good care of yourself and you have relevancy and you're you know, you have a balanced life, then you can sail through these ages. But a lot of people don't, and they check out. And another checkout time is 118 to 120. Well, I don't know anybody who's that old because they've all drank the Kool-Aid of, of uh, man-made industrial race-conscious thinking where we haven't taken very good care of ourselves. So the trick to staying here and utilizing your blueprint is to really take care of the physical body. You cannot stay here without a physical body. We won't get into like the astral bodies or etheric bodies or mental bodies. We're just going to talk today about the mental, the physical body that you have. So I hope this gives you an idea. Remember, in your name is your personality. In your name are your talents, your karma, if you have any, the destiny that you really wanted to go to in this lifetime. Why did you come here? You know, it was Mark Twain who said the two most important days of your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. And they really are. So you need to find out why and you need to find out early so you can live your life according to what you planned before birth. And if you don't like your name, you can call yourself anything you want once you get here. It doesn't matter. But you will never lose the original blueprint. That's always at work. You created that prior to birth. The only thing that scares you in leaving, really, is you don't know how you're going to get out of here. You know how you got in, but you don't know how you're going to get out. So we'll save that for another talk. And I hope that um, you'll join me again. And we'll talk some of the things that scare us to death, like how do we get out? How do we leave this physical body? Uh, besides getting some awful disease, which is suffering. And so let's talk about that on another visit. First of all, I want to thank you for staying this long with me. If you'd like more information, go to my website, gailminogue.com, M-I-N-O-G-U-E, Gail, G-A-I-L, M-I-N-O-G-U-E. Or you can also pick up my book, which is on my website, um, Divine Design, How You Created the Life You Are Living. Numbers are important. Remember, everything is n numerical. Everything is coded, including you. Your house number, your office number, your car license plate number, everything's important. So I look forward to having you join me again, and I thank you for staying with me with this video. Bye for now.